here with Caitlin, who's the winner of the uh, Three Minute Thesis competition. Caitlin, can you, um, congratulations first of all, can you tell us a bit about uh, tonight and what it was like for you? Um, well, it was a bit nerve wracking in the beginning, obviously. It was nice once I had actually presented and I got to pay a bit more attention to the presentations that went after, which is pretty cool to listen to what everyone else has to say. And then obviously pretty exciting at the end, so it was a good evening. Um, can you take us back six months, nine months, however long it was ago that this that you decided to enter the competition and can you talk a bit about why you wanted to enter and what you wanted to get out of it? Yeah, so um, when I decided to enter the competition, which was, I don't know, back in the fall, is it, or autumn, you say here? Um, I decided I would enter and I wanted to be able to, I guess, communicate to a broader population what my research was about and in clear, simple, concise form. I do struggle with being concise, so it was an exercise in learning how to shorten what I needed to say and still communicate the important points. So I spent quite a bit of time writing and shortening and clarifying what I wanted to say in my three minutes, and then I began practicing. And if you look back now to, to tonight and look back those six months or whatever, how, how, what sort of journey have you been on? Do you think you've actually become a, a better communicator as such? I think so. It's really interesting to think of when I was first presenting it um, and I guess just trying to remember what I was going to say or learning what I was going to say and the route memory that went into that and then getting to the final stages and recognizing how important your body language is and the gestures and the way you interact with the audience, which is something at the beginning I probably was less aware of or less able to focus on. Um, what would you say to someone in your position 12 months ago or six months ago, a PhD student or a a, um, a higher degree by research student who's thinking about uh, coming and participating in some sort of competition, what would you say to them? What would, your, would you recommend it to other people and why would you recommend it? Yeah, I mean it pushes your boundaries. Being up there is pretty nerve wracking. So I think it's a good way to learn how to say what you want to say in a way that people will engage with, which is important because if you want people to understand your research or to hear about your research, a broader um, audience is obviously beneficial and it also I guess gives you the experience of getting onto a stage and communicating which is something that's an important skill for everyone. Presentation is something that I have no doubt I'll come across numerous times yet in my career and I think other people would find the same. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be studying at the University of Adelaide? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's the an short, interesting The short version. The short version, I, I'm Canadian, but I also have Australian citizenship. My mum is Australian, and I was debating where I might go to do further study, and Adelaide is just a really livable city, so when I was researching the cities in Ad or around Australia, Adelaide stood out as somewhere that was fiscally responsible to live, as well as having a real community by the sounds of it. I also have family here. And the University of Adelaide stood out as the university in Adelaide that I would want to attend. I did um, a postgraduate diploma first, and I really liked the university, the faculty, made friends, and I decided I wanted to stay. So that's how I got here. What's, what's your short, I guess short to medium term goals career-wise now that you're sort of mid-PhD and, and you know, down that path, what are you looking to do um, research-wise now? Well, research-wise, I'd like to keep focused on yoga or meditation or something that people can do, you know, that people can take home and do, and it's going to benefit their health, um, their well-being, both physically and psychologically, ideally, and I think that's why yoga really appeals to me. So I would like to be able to push that research agenda in the future if doors open. I'm doing a combined psychology um, master's, so the clinical psychology, so that will, I guess, give me the skills I need to be a therapist as well. So if I can start to combine therapy with my research and maybe looking at doing something with yoga coupled with therapy or looking at yoga as a viable alternative to therapy where that option might not be available, I'd really be interested in that. So just have to find funding and the avenue and I'll go forth. <laughs> what do you think is the biggest um, misconception that people outside, you know, the academia and universities and higher degree research, what's the biggest misconception they have about research and and pushing yourself in that sort of area? What do you, do you does that make sense, that question? I think so. I guess so you're sort of asking 
what, what do people perceive about research that might not necessarily be the way it really yeah, is? That's right, yeah. I think everyone thinks it's very clean cut and it goes A to B to C and it's, it's not. It's really messy and I think I've had to personally learn how to deal with that ambiguity and not knowing what's coming and trying to deal with things that come up in the best way I can and not let that get me down to recognize that's part of the process and when you deal with humans and you deal with research, it's a big unknown and that's what makes it exciting but that's what makes it messy. Um, last question, uh, can you sum up your three minute thesis experience in three words? Yeah, it's funny because I was trying to do that earlier, now I think I forgot um, <laughs> because of all the nerves, but I think one is creativity, it felt like a really creative process to write out and draft and think of how I would communicate my research in an engaging manner, so it was definitely um, a creativity driven process. I think it was very inspiring, like it was inspiring for myself to sort of see how I developed and how I learned to communicate, but also to see the other um, presenters. It's pretty amazing research and it's, it's cool. It's cool to see what else is being done in different departments. I'm contained in my little bubble in my, in my department, in my school, so seeing what other people are doing is really inspiring. Um, and I guess what would my third word be? Maybe exhilarating? <laughs> like it's pretty exhilarating to get up on a stage and to present something and to engage with an audience and and to see the impact of what you're expressing and how that that reaches people. You know, people have been coming up to me tonight and asking about yoga and that's pretty cool because it's something I love. So it's pretty exhilarating for me.